Hi, welcome to my video on the review of quadratic functions. And as in all my reviews, I treat my review as a quiz, if you wish to do that way. This quiz is at a 50, so this is page 1 of 7. There's six more pages to come. And you do each of the questions, give yourself a mark, total up the bottom of, of each page, and get your score at the end. Here we go. Treat it as a quiz. Pause your video for each question and work out the answer and give yourself a score. Or you can do it all and your choice, but I do one page at a time. f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 2. Find the f of negative 3. The f of negative 3 means negative 3 is going in the place of x. That's negative 3 squared is 9 minus 12 minus 2. And that's a negative 3, that's a negative 5. So the f of negative 3 is negative 5. Give yourself a mark if you're right. And if find x if the f of x equals 10. So the f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 2. Therefore, x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals 10. Because they're both equal to the f of x. That means x squared plus 4x minus 2 minus 10 equals 0. Move all terms to the left side. Simplify. Negative 12. Factor. Because it's a quadratic. x squared x. x squared is x and x. The product is negative 12. The number on the end because a is 1. a times c is negative 12. And the sum is 4. What's the factors of 12 to give you a 4? 6 and 2. It's 1 and 12 won't give you a 4. Uh, 3 and 4 won't give you a 4. So 6 and 2. Product is negative. So 1 is plus and 1 is minus. Because the sum is plus, we got a plus 6 minus 2. That means x plus 6 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. x is negative 6. Or x is 2. If you got yourself... Two of these correct, give yourself a mark. Number two, graph the f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6 using each. Notice this is the f of x notation, but we really want, you can just change the f of x to a y. Remember, the f of x is the y. So, how do we get the verdicts? We're doing x equals negative b over 2a. And so that's a is negative 2, b is 8, c is negative 6. So that's the negative of 8 over 2 times a, which is negative 2. Negative 8 over negative 4. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2. Now we have to sub that into the equation. We could say y equals already f of, we could go f of 2, or just say y, but we're going to sub 2 in the place of x. So we say it's the f of 2, x is 2, we're subbing 2 in. So 2 squared is 4, that's a negative 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Remember PEMDAS, we have to square first and then multiply after. We don't go negative 4 and then square it. No, we square first and then multiply it. 8. So that gives us uh, the vertex of that 16, 8, 16 is a 2. So the vertex is 2, 2. Okay. X-intercepts. How do we get the x-intercepts? We let y equal 0. So take the equation which is negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 6 equals 0. We let y equal 0 and we solve it. Again, I can divide, I can factor, or div because I have an equation, I can divide by negative 2. Or I could factor out the negative 2, either or. x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals 0. Divide by negative 2. x x factors of 3, that's the product is 3, so it's 3 and 1. And 
the product is 3 and the sum is negative 4. The product is positive, so it has to be 2 minus is y. When you multiply two negatives, you get a plus, and when you add, you get a minus. So x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3, x is equal to 1. So we have the x intercept we get one mark for each of them, you give yourself two marks. And with the y intercept with the vertex, if you get two, two of them right, you give yourself a mark each. If you got x is two and y is two. And the y intercept is when we let x equals zero in our equation. So we can go to f of zero, or we can say, you know, x is zero. So negative two is zero, eight is zero. So this is 0, 0, negative 6. So the y-intercept is negative 6. And again, that's the point where x is 0, y is negative 6. And this is the point, x is 3, y is 0. This is the point where x is 1, y is 0. Remember, we let y equal 0. y is 0. So this graph is probably using the vertex. The vertex is x is 2, y is 2. And the x-intercepts are 3 and 1. 3 right there and 1 right there. And the y-intercept is a negative 6. 5, negative 6 right there. So the parabola goes like this. get a little curve there. Notice the axis of symmetry is down to the middle of x equals 2, halfway between 1 and 3. So, if you get, uh, we got two marks for that and two marks. If you got the y-intercept of negative 6, give yourself a mark. And if you graphed all this correctly, give yourself three marks, total of 10 per page. Okay. Third question, state the transformation on the f of x. So when we've got a negative outside the f of x, that's reflected, that's making the y negative, so it's reflected in the x axis. Give yourself a mark. If you have inside the brackets, then that's a plus four, so that means you're gone four right. It's in terms of the x, it's always the opposite. Remember, if you put a four in here, you get zero, so it's gone four right. Here you're adding 2 on to the f of x, which is a y, so that's gone up 2. And here you're multiplying the y by 6, so it's a vertical stretch of 6. Give yourself a mark if each of these are right. Number 4, write the equation if the f of x equals x squared. If f of x equals x squared is reflected in the x-axis. So it's reflected in the x-axis. Then the equation becomes f of x is reflected, so it's the negative of the negative outside, and left is, a, is horizontal, so left is a minus 4, so the equation got a plus 4. So you move left, negative 4, so the equation got a plus 4. So if we got this equation right, give yourself a mark. A vertical stretched vertically by 3 and down 6. So it's the f of x equals stretch vertically by 3. So it's 3 times x squared and down. There's no horizontal. Down 6 is a minus 6. Again, the equation is in terms of f of x, not the y. That's what I'm doing the function notation. And f of x is okay hold on now the equation ran out of ink or sorry my pin the equation the pin ran out of ink hopefully this won't work let's see yep okay we got it working uh two right is a plus two so that is going to be an x minus two in the equation and up 1 is a plus 1. So if you got that equation, give yourself a mark. Number 5. Find the equation of the parabola as f of x equals 
a outside of x minus h all squared plus k, which is the vertex form. So if this is the vertex, this is the h, and this is the k. This is the, they're both, at, they're all these coordinates are x and y's, but this is a special one. And this is one we'll call the x and y. The vertex is a special. So y equals a. We'll put the vertex in first. So that's a minus one, so that's a plus one. Plus four. Remember, you change this to a plus, not this one. Now we put the H and the K in. Now we're going to put the X and the Y in. Now I do one at a time so that I don't get mixed up. So notice I put the H and the K in first, and then I put the X and the Y in after. This is the way I do it. And then I simplify it. As a 2 squared is 4, so that's a 4A plus 4. I could leave the 4A there and move the 4 over because it's a simple number. It's, by now you should see that you can do that. Normally I would move the A to the left and the numbers to the right, but since that's positive, I let it stay there and just move the 4. So we want it in this form. It's F of X. A is negative 3. A is negative 3. And the vertex is X plus 1 when you put it in, plus 4. So the vertex of negative 1, 4 are going in. That's the same what I have here as what's here. So there's the equation that represents the parabola. And if you put it in the uh, this form correctly right here, one mark. If you worked out the A, you got a mark. If you worked out this equation, you got a marks of three together, all together. Add up, it's totaled out of ten. And hopefully everything is going well. You know what the chapter is about. Number six, we did a, a video on zeros. The zeros of the P of X, so the zeros of this is the zeros of a polynomial. P for polynomials, the zeros of a polynomial. And the zeros of a polynomial is when you let the p of x equal zero. So you negative four x squared minus twelve x equals zero. So the zeros are really the roots of the equation. That's if you wrote the equation. If you wrote the equation like this, then you in this equation, this equation are similar, but this is a graph. So now we're finding the x-intercepts of this. But if we wrote the equation like this, equal to zero, we're finding the roots. So this is the equation we're going to solve for x, so we'll find the roots. But when it's written like this, we're finding the zeros. When it's written like this, we're finding the x-intercepts. So hopefully it's not too confusing. Negative 4 is common. Or 4 is common, and we don't want a negative in the leading term. So we get a sorry, negative 4. 4x, I'm going ahead of myself, so that's an x plus 3. Negative 4x squared divided by negative 4x is x. Negative 12x divided by negative 4x is 3. Negative 4x equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. Divide by negative 4. x equals 0. x equals negative 3. So the zeros are zero and a negative three. Give yourself a mark if you get both of them right. And state the domain of, this is the a, a parabola in standard form, and a can't be zero, because if a is zero, you, you won't have a quadratic. And the domain of every parabola is x, e, r, real numbers. All parabolas have all the x's in every one of their graphs. All the x's will fit into the equation. Give yourself a mark. You have all reals. But the range, the domain is the x values. Again, D and R, X and Y alphabetically. D is before R, X is before Y. And the range is the what? Range is the Y values. And so here's the vertex right here. The vertex is 2 and negative 1. So the range is in terms of the Y. And y starts at negative 1. And notice the y's are going up. So it's greater than or equal to. The vertex right here 
is negative 2, 3. Vertex is negative 2, 3. And the range is the y values. The y values start at y is 3. And the y's are going down. So it's equal to less than. It says equal to because 3 is in the graph. And all y values less than 3 are in the graph. Give yourself a mark each of your right. And the vertex of this parabola, the vertex is opposite of negative 1, which is 1, and negative 3. And because a is less than 0, a is negative 1, less than 0, the parabola is, is and a is less than 0, negative, the parabola is open and down. So the range is y is negative 3, and it's going down, so it's less than, equal to. And we have the um, quadratic here. The vertex is opposite of plus 2, minus 2, keeping the 1. And the a is greater than 0. a is 3, greater than 0. That means the parabola is open up. So the y value of the vertex is 1. It's opening up, so it's greater than, equal to. Give yourself a mark each if both of them are right. Number nine, which one has the maximum point of one, four? Remember, maximum point is like this. So that means the maximum point is the highest point. That means the parabola is going down. So the parabola is going down, A is less than zero. So A here is one. Nope. A here is one. Nope. A here is negative one. And A here is negative 1. So either one of these two. But the vertex is 1, 4. The vertex here, oh, is 1, 4. The vertex here is negative 1, 4. So the answer is C. You have C, give yourself a mark. Total up your page, a 7. Let's continue. We're doing a review of all the videos that's in this uh, unit. A good test. Which one has a minimum value of 2? Again, the minimum value is the lowest value. So a minimum value, if that's the lowest value, that means your parabola is opening upward. That means A is greater than 0. So if A is greater than 0, greater than 0 means up. So we have a positive A. So A is 1 here. A right here is 1. A here is negative 1, and A in this one is negative 1. So we have to have one of these two. So it has a minimum value of 2. So the minimum value is always the Y value. The maximum value is always the Y value. So the vertex is 3, 2. So this is the answer. A is the answer. Give yourself a mark. The minimum or maximum value is 3. The minimum or maximum value is 3. The minimum or maximum value is always the y value, is always the number on the end of the vertex, if it's in vertex form. Find the maximum value of this one. Quadratic equation, parabola. So the vertex is x equals, the x coordinate of the vertex is x equals negative b over 2a. a is negative 1, b is negative 3, c is 1. Negative b, b is negative 3, all over 2 times, um, 2 times a is 1, just a, sorry, a is negative 1, so that's 3 over negative 2, that's a negative 3 over 2. So negative b over 2a. Okay, now we have to sub that in. So y equals the negative of negative 3 over 2 squared minus. So we sub that in and take our time. So that's negative 3 over 2 squared, 9 over 4. That's a negative 9 over 4. Plus 3 over 1. That's a positive 9 over 2 plus 1. Common denominator is 4. So we multiply by 2 over 2. This is 18 over 4. 1 is 4 over 4. 
Common denominator is 4. So we have 9 plus 4 is 13. So again, the vertex is negative 3 over 2 and 13 over 4. So the maximum value, because it's negative, the maximum value is 13 over 4. 13 over 4. So if you get right here, you get 1. If you get this one, you get 1. So two marks all together. Number 12, find the equation as f of x equals a outside of x minus h all squared plus k. If the parabola has an axis of symmetry, x minus 2, x equals negative 2, minimum value of 4 with a y-intercept of 24. So, vertex form. So, the, vert the axis of symmetry passes through your vertex. So, the axis of symmetry passes through negative 2, so that's the x-coordinate of your vertex. The minimum value or maximum value is always the y-value of your vertex. So we got our vertex. So we plug that into our equation and we get y equals a minus 2 becomes plus 2 squared plus 4. Now it has a y-intercept of 24, so y-intercept of 24, x is 0, y is 24. So y is 24, x is 0. So 24, zero, uh, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so 4a plus 4. Again, leave the a there and move your 4, make it negative. So that gives me 20 equals 4a, divide by 4, and they cancel. It cancels to give me 5. So, we want the equation in this form, so f of x, we want a, we found a to be 5, and we have the vertex, we got the equation right here already done, so it's an x plus 2 squared plus 4. And there's 6 marks, so if you get the vertex correct, you get a mark for each of those, that's 2. If you write down, if you fill that in this equation, you get another one. If you plug it in here, you get another one. If you plug, if you get the five, you get another one. And if you work out that, you get six all together. Number 13. 6x minus 2y equals 8. Express y as a function of x. Express y. That means y is on the left and the x is on the right. So, in other words, I have to take the equation and solve it for y. So, negative 2y equals negative 6x. 6x comes over to become negative. Divide by negative 2. Negative 2 is cancel. Cancels again to give me 3x. And cancels again to give me negative 9. So, if you have this equation, give yourself a mark. Because y is in terms of x. We plug the x's in. The input is x is the input value or the in, independent variable. Deep y depends on x, that's independent, that's dependent. So y is a function of x right now. Add them up, scores out of 10. Okay, number 14. Express the area of a triangle A, area A of a triangle, as a function of its height h if the base is 6 times the height. So it says the base is 6 times the height. So we want the area, which is a half, the base, times the height. So we want the area on the left, and we want the height on the right. So that means if we want the area as a function of the height. We have to eliminate the B. So the base is 6H. So half of 6 is 3, h times h is h squared. So notice the area is a function of the height. And what does that mean? It means the area is on the left, yes, the height is on the right, and we don't have any b's in our equation. Perfect. Give yourself a mark if you have a equals 3h squared. Number 15, an object is thrown up into the air. Its path is defined by this equation which is a quadratic. 
and notice it's a negative so it indicates that it's thrown up into the air so it's doing this but as you can see if that's the ground it starts off at 10 10 high it starts off right there this is not there so it starts here 10 up in the air and going up and then it comes down so there's your 10 off the ground when you because if you let t be zero you get 10 so the h of zero you get 10. find is maximum height so we'll go t equals negative b over 2a that will give me the time when it gets its natural uh when it gets its a maximum height so a is negative 16 b is 48 c is 10. so the negative of 48 all over 2 times negative 16 and we get a negative 48 all over uh, negative 2 so it's a negative 32 and 32 into that that uh, goes I believe it goes uh, 48 divided by 32 so let's cancel. Uh, 8 into 48 goes 6, 4, so that's a 3 over 2, or 1.5. That's the time when it reaches its maximum height. So let's solve that into the equation. Negative 16, and we got 1.5 squared plus 48, 1.5 plus 10. So it's better to sub that into I got a graphing calculator here so let's sub this equation in and work it out so I have a negative 16 bracket 1.5 and I'm typing it in exactly what I see that's the beauty of the calculators and I get 46 so all that works out to be 46. Since I have a calculator, sub it in. And move the calculator aside, move the paper back. So the vertex is 1.5, giving you a 46. So this is the time when it reaches maximum height of 46. Give yourself a mark for the time. Give yourself a mark for getting 46. Two marks all together. Number 16, the sum of two numbers is 10. If their product is a maximum, find the numbers. The sum of two numbers, well, let's, let me do it two ways. Let me do it the fast way. Let x be one number. Remember, if the sum is 10, then the other number is 10 minus x. That's... So if I give you a one number is 8, the other one is 10 minus 8. If I give you 6, the other number is 10 minus 6. So the product is two numbers multiplied together. So the product is 10x minus x squared. And we put it in descending order. we got to put it in disorder because I want it in what? ax squared plus bx plus c. And we want... The uh, the numbers, so x is equal to negative b over 2a, which is a is negative 1, b is 10, so it's the negative of 10, 2 times negative 1, negative 10 over negative 2, which is 5, and the other number is, we got to go with the other number 10 minus x, so it's 10 minus 5, which is 5. So the numbers that give you the maximum product is, numbers are 5 and 5. So let me do that better. 5 and 5. Now some people do this this way. The sum of the two numbers, they'll let x be one number and they'll let y be the other number. They use x and y. I use x and 10 minus x. If I use x and y, 
the sum of the numbers is x plus y equals 10. Makes sense. Their product, so the product of the numbers is x times y. Makes sense. Now I need the product as a function of one of the numbers. So I'm going to solve this equation for y. So y equals negative x plus 10. So now I sub in terms of y, x times x. So there's the x, and here's the y. And so the product is negative x squared plus 10x, which is this equation here is the same as this one. So we did it this way and worked it out, or we did it this way and worked it out. You got four marks. So whatever way you did it, you, if you write down the equation, like if you do it this way, I get one here. And then if you got this equation, I got one here. And if you worked out this five, you got one. And if you worked out this five, you got one. If you rolled it this way, then you got, if you rolled it with this equation, you got one. If you solved it, you got one. If you subbed it in, I got one. If you worked out your answers, then you got, you know, one. So all together, four. And totally a page out of seven. So different ways. Again, I do it two ways to explain, but it's your choice. And to end it off, we have a river and we have 60 meters of fencing is needed to form the rectangular garden on the side of a river. Um, we're not going to put any fencing on the river. What are the, what dimensions will produce the maximum area and what is the maximum area? Well, what we have is we have a perimeter of fencing, which is 60. We have the perimeter is a length. And these, if it's going to be maximum area, this got to be rectangles in here. So we got, we got an L, and we got W, W, W. So L plus 3W. That means that L plus 3W must be 60. And we have the area of the rectangle, the maximum area. The area is length times width. But we need the area as a function of one of the variables. So what we'll do, I'll do, is I'll take, solve it for L, because it's easier. L is equal to negative 3W plus 60. So, and we replace L with a negative 3W plus 60 times W. So the area is negative 3W squared plus 60W. So this equation helps me to define the length in terms of the width. When I sub it into this formula, I get the area as a function of the width. So I got W is equal to negative B over 2A. A is negative 3, B is 60. So that's the negative of 60 all over 2 times A, which is negative 3, negative 60 over negative 6. So W is 10. And if W is 10, the length is negative 3W plus 60. So the length is W is 10, negative 30 plus 60. So the dimensions are the width is 10, the length is 30. Let's see. 10 10, 10 is 30, plus the 30, 60 all together. And because we have area, then the area is length times the width. So the length is 30, times the width is 10. So the area is 300, and it's in meters. So it's 300 square meters. You could also, but since you found the length and the width, just multiply and we get the area. But you could also plug... Uh, 10 into this equation so you could write down the equation if, if you only found the width if you just wanted the maximum area if you want if you plug the width in here so 
So if I found the width to be 10 and then plugged it into this area, so I get 10 squared is 100. So I'll square first. So it has negative 300 plus 600. Because I found the length and the width, I just had to multiply them to get 300 for area. But if I didn't do the length, if I found the width and plugged the width into this formula here, into this equation, 10 in, I will get the maximum area. Remember, the vertex, the vertex V is W in terms of A. The area is a function of the width. So this is like y and x. x is, y is a function of x. x is first and the, y is second. So x is first, y is second. So w is first, area is second. So the area is a function of the width. Again, I just want to repeat that. Because sometimes they'll just ask you for the maximum area. So you just need to get the length, or sorry, get the width, and plug it into the equation that you started with. You didn't need to get the length. But if you did get the length and the width, then you can multiply it. You'll have the maximum area. That brings us, and now you can total up all your pages. Total up all your pages. Put your mark that you have at a 50 right here. Divide 50 into that score or just double it because it's out of 100. And then you get your percent or divide 50 into this numerator. Get a decimal and then move it two places to the right. But since it's at a 50, just double your mark that you get, and you'll have your percentage. Hopefully you did well on the quadratic functions. And if you like my video, click the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell. Visit my math website, www.mathfullyexplained.com, to find more information about me, my videos, and the content. And that's the content on my YouTube channel called Math Fully Explained. Thank you for viewing my video. Bye-bye.